so over here in Iran, we are actually the biggest, you know what, let's transfer power, let's move the Caspian Sea one down here. So this is going to be more power transfer towards our own trade node. Uh, it should make us a bit more money. Oh, right now that's Trebizond. I just wonder, is there any constructions going on right now in our territory? Not by the looks of it. Of course, we were just in a bloody war for a while. We got half our nation sieged down, so yeah, it was a bit of a rough one. Yeah, currently the corruption is still going up, but that is just... Until the year changes, it might uh, be quite different. I could turn this area into a state. Uh, that's probably not a bad idea, although... Let's have a look. The war shows non accepted culture, separatism, intolerance... Got no missionaries to send. Osman game, Georgia is also a bit powerful. Not as big as you. And when I beat Trebizond a bit, they vassalize it and it's degrading them. <laughs> Ooh, that's actually a good point. Um, Theodoro. How close are you being vassalized? It's eight points. Ooh. Well, first things first, let's improve relations. Because that's honestly not far. Military power compared to Theodorian, plus 20. Deployed reputation, royal marriage, ally attitude toward Georgia. Trust is O. And now it's just suddenly the military O because we're fighting. I was like, hold on a minute. Why are we just losing the points that quickly? But no, it's just the rebellion here is eating through our field army a little bit. Once we've reinforced, we should be much higher again. But if we could vassalize uh, Theodoro, that'd be brilliant. Because, at, ooh. If we could get that... Theodora is probably something that we will annex ourselves. Uh, right, so where's the next rebellion? Cassia. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the army back to capital. And start... Oh, noble marriage expired. That gave the nobility quite a bit of power, which... is still got 81%. We might want to just let that drop on its own for the time being. And there isn't really any... Reforms that I want to do right. Ooh. Right, we need higher state reach for this one. But that would give us the better taxes. Also get Diplor up. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, in that case, we might want to do that. If we want to try to vassalize uh, uh, Trebizond. Which we might want to. Oh, there we go, another conversion done. Just keep them coming. Okay, so now they have military power of their own, technically speaking. But they don't want to be vassalized. Uh, but yeah, the fact that we had the military power for a little while helped quite a bit. Of course, the... Oh, actually, no, the diplomatic reputation is now the same. And I had to do trust. So it was just a plus 20 from the military that made quite a difference there. Economic base is probably going to be a little bit hindered for a little while. I'm so happy that we won the war against Mamla. It was a really close war. Like, there were a few points where we could have lost, and I was almost ready to... May need to wait to 750 development to get them. Possibly. At least we got a little bit of development out of the war. Or peace deal. Not necessarily out of the war. I mean, how much are these? That's 12 and 14. Oh, so that's 26 points. So how are we doing right now? So 513. I think overall we may have lost a little bit regardless in that war. Tank you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Genoa might be an option, but the problem is that they are quite strong in fleets. I mean, we, if we have a war goal over here, but can we actually claim that? Oh, yeah, we could. Let's have a look, at, just out of curiosity. If we were to declare the... Oh, wow. Um, in a trade league, and they got allies, so that would actually be quite a lot of troops. Of course, how many of those would be able to reach us is the question. Probably Milan. Actually, no, not really even Milan. Like Ravenna and a few others. I'm not going to declare the war. Alpha is quite the city. I mean, it is quite nice, yeah. But like, if we take all three of these, that'd be brilliant. Maybe we'd give one of them to Genoa. Or uh, Trebizond, sorry. Well, speaking of Trebizond, is there any... No, I don't think we can vassalize them. Go ahead and get another conversion done. Yeah, we could spy on them. We don't necessarily need the diplomats for anything else right now. Build the spy network and Theodora just double checking. Yeah, we've got the full trust over there. 
vassalizer, so it's now 23 points away. Now that the military power is slowly picking up speed again. Uh, so why is the... Oh wow, we are so much over our force limit right now. <laughs> well, I mean, we started like one or two points below the force limit, but throughout the war it went down quite a bit. Oh, the treasurer has died. Okay, let's see, is there... There would be another bureaucrat, natural scientist. Tech cost goes down, that wouldn't be bad actually. There's a level 2 advisor though, we might want to go for level 1 right now. Which is part of the nobility, but I mean, the urban production efficiency isn't bad. Commerce production efficiency is pretty good as well. Here's the arrows who has a bit of influence, but I think that's alright. Keep a bit of a cheaper advisor for now. And yeah, if we get the 4 over here, that's going to be giving us a little bit more time, especially on these areas. Plus, since it's on a mountain, that's another extra point of attrition. And combat is really narrow there. Local core creation costs. Oh, right. Local defense is 30%. So with the 4, it's probably going to be even higher. Are the penalties... Um... Hello, Greenfold. Uh, penalties to hiring advisors of the wrong religion. Um, there's some events that happened, and you can't level them up. So it's uh, like... Um, sometimes there's some events that you might lose uh, some prestige and that sort of things. But like overall, it's not too bad, I would say. But yeah, like uh, th there's some negatives to it, but for the most part, you don't necessarily have to worry about it if you don't want to. If you want to worry about it, then of course you're welcome to, but... Right, let's go ahead and put down rebel suppression duty on <laughs> pretty much half the country. Which is not really going to be efficient by any means, but at least it means that there's going to be a little bit of reduction on everything. That might reduce some of the uprisings to not actually happen at all. Yeah, there's at least one. There's second one. Okay, so there was two that were reduced to zero. Oh, actually there's another one that is now reducing. Yeah, it is actually helping quite a bit in here. Right, I think we're going to go to speed four now. I'll wait for the castle to be built and our uh, nation to slowly recover from the war. Uh, Rebel Suppression is a vanilla mechanic, yes. And a very useful mechanic at that. I don't remember which DLC adds it, though. Well, actually, it might be vanilla now. But at some point, I think it was added by a DLC or with a pre-update alongside the DLC, but I don't remember when that was. It was years ago. Like, I'm uh, kind of um, thinking that it may have been Art of War or something like that. Which added it. Karaman must go... Ooh! Okay, Karaman is going to have some hard time here. Oh, and we're going to get a tech. An admin tech at that. I'm sure. Did we decide on which uh, idea group to take? It probably needs to be either... Admin or some military, but military we're trying to catch up, so probably admin. Could go for the bureaucratic. Um, it does have a lot of good things, for example, the daily corruption stability, more advisors, ruler authority does go down though. Uh, advisor cost goes down, admin cost. Another one would be economic. That would, ooh, economic would give a, a free admin policy, which means that we can have both the centralization. Um, policy and the conversion policies. That wouldn't be bad either, actually. Then, of course, the various uh, economic stuff over here would be pretty good. The Empire ideas for the stability, prestige... Elite power from autonomy is a little bit less... Ooh! That would also be quite nice. More centralization, harsh treatment costs, capital infrastructure costs. That would be actually pretty handy. Would pay itself back quite nicely in the long run. Uh, pathing infrastructure costs, monthly autonomy change, unjustified demands, change rival costs, and yield centralization, and at the end, income from vassals, vassal force limit contribution. Hmm. Then, of course, there would be something like the. Uh, is it the. Hold on. Oh, right, it's the evangelical ideas that gives the Casus Belly. Hmm. Civic religion idea, so that would... Ooh, manpower training cost. That's not too bad. The more legitimacy, autonomy, ability, fire detection, and admin advisor cost. I think... Classic may help catch up. That's also true. 
Institutions, spread and true faith, provinces, prestige decay, possible advisors, institution impraisement cost minus 15%, provenance of heat and idea cost minus 5%, knowledge output plus 10%, and tech cost to them minus 7.5%. Hmm. That would be fairly decent. But I'm almost uh, leaning towards other bureaucratic or economic ideas. Or, well, technically Empire would be okay as well, but I think right now Empire is not really a priority. Economic would be really good for the administrative uh, or extra policy and then the smaller cost for all the buildings. So half percent for unified tech ideas. Hmm. Uh, hold on. Buildings, the same infrastructure. Hold on a minute. It was, uh... Well, kind of, I think the path thing is, uh, like, there's a different buildings. And I think building cost is just all buildings, but, like, there's uh, stuff over here, like, amenities. Oh, right, actually. Yeah, the infrastructure is basically these here. So that would be amenities, capital. Oh, that's, yeah, that's infrastructure, infrastructure. Garrisons in infrastructure, pathing is infrastructure. Irrigation, and then harborage. Those are the ones that are infrastructure. Then buildings are basically just the fortifications. If you want to reform and don't have institution, you'll need points, otherwise you'll be a backwater country with a very bad tech. I mean, that is true. But yeah, the idea cost minus 5% isn't bad. And the tech cost 7.5% isn't bad either. Problem that we will be having though is that a large majority of our country is not of our own religion. And that is gonna, like, the usefulness of the institution, for, it, for example, is gonna be somewhat limited. Let me stick right here, jeez. <laughs> I mean, app for the time period, for sure. Not reform and choose other idea group. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, it would save us points in the long run. But is it like the, well, the possible advisors would be okay. Institutional imprisonment course would save us a lot of money in the long run. Tolerance of heat, oh, I mean, that's actually not bad. I sound like this a lot more now. The idea of course, knowledge output is going to make us a ton of money, or uh, like wealth for the uh, populace. And then tech costs. You know what? We might go for the scholastic ideas actually. Because, I mean, while there isn't really any provinces that will be benefiting from the institution spread quite yet, although it is, well, it's slowly spreading. You know what? We should probably start focusing on converting something like their bend then. Because this is the. One that we got the highest one. Oh, there's a lot of corruption there. Oh, actually, it's just the state corruption, isn't it? <laughs> well, the tolerance is going to be really useful for us because the conversions in this mod are really slow. So, like, we've been converting pretty much non-stop since we started expanding, and we've converted maybe half a dozen provinces. So we need to make them not hate the um, our ruling until we can get to converting them. Um, well, the thing is, like, uh, we can increase the speed that we do the conversion, or the missionary does the mission, but, like, uh, it's uh, dependent on how much population there is in the province. And every time it converts, it converts, like, um, 1,000 to 2,000, usually, in the population. And that means that you may need to do, for example, Chechnya over here, we still need to do probably about... I don't know, 25, 30, maybe even more than that, uh, conversions in there. And of course, each conversion doesn't take all that long, necessarily. It depends on the modifiers that you have, of course. But, like, it's still going to be a lot of time. Depends, uh, of course, as I said, on the population of the province. The smaller populations are much easier to convert. Or faster to convert, in a way, overall. But, like, it depends on also a lot of the missionaries' um, strength and all that. Um, I think the thing where you could expel all religious monasteries in 3.0, um, I don't know actually. I mean, yeah, there's the direct the clergy, but I think that is mostly on... Oh! I didn't realize that you can actually check the numbers over here. This is going to be the really easy way to check the total population. Inquisition, organizing Inquisition. Um, 
Let's have a look at the organized missionaries, because we've got missionaries already going. Oh. Okay, Ultralux mission is an organized effort to spread our fate to new converts. Missions involve sending individuals and groups across the uh, boundaries, most commonly geographic boundaries, to carry on evangelism or other activities, such as educational or hospital work. Sometimes individuals are sent and are called uh, missionaries. Uh, we can work with our clergy to focus conversion efforts on specific provinces. Uh, for that, we have two ways to go about it. Send a missionary in a province and focus on that province. Uh, rep in several provinces and ask missionaries to convert those provinces. In both cases, you can ask them to convert up to either 50 or 90% of the population to your religion. Uh, missionaries sent this way will not accept to go in provinces with unrest. Oh, right. Missionary will enter the mission once the conversion goal is reached. If the missionary strength drops too low, or if there is unrest in the province, at any point you can recall your missionaries if they are converting a majority community, missionaries are visible on the map. They'll finish their conversion activity and come home. If they are dealing with minority communities through province modifier, they will be back at the following turn of the month. Okay. Uh, we'll continue mission to 50% at least. See if that actually has an impact. Our missionaries have finished their activities, however, they feel obliged to indicate that their mission in some provinces could not be finished as expected due to mounting unrest or resistance. Ah, I see. Okay, so one of the... Okay, so Chechnya doesn't have unrest, so it was the other province that had the pro problems. Derbent doesn't have... Oh, actually. In that case, let's go ahead and send that to Derbent. Let's start converting Derbent, because if we can turn that into Orthodox, that'd be nice. Well, let's actually... You know what, we'll wait for next month, or we'll wait for the tax uh, calculations to be done. And how is our army size now? Uh, we are still three over our force limit. Not going to take care of or reduce the army size, though. Although that reminds me, we should have a look at Theodora if they are any closer to becoming a vessel yet or not. Probably not, but we shall see. I still got 1300 days for the modern castle. Boy, that is going to take a while. Now I'm hoping that Mamluks don't try to attack me again right after the peace deal, uh, or truce wears out. But of course they might, but if that's the case, we might be able to win them again, just uh, with being smart, how we use our troops. But did Mamluks, uh, they're still fighting against Karaman, so that, well, I don't think it's going to last all that long. So, actually, who all are they fighting? Adel, Kaz, Karaman, and... Oh, so they are trying to expand to the southern areas down here. Interesting. Inquisition would be a good idea. <laughs> uh, right, so let's actually have a look at the... Recall the diplomat. Um, direct clergy. Well, nice missionaries. Continue mission to 50% conversion. Uh, some of the things that I've not really had interact so with all that much. But yeah, if we could maybe convert at least this province, because this is a gold province, that'd be quite nice. Also, the autonomy seems to be dropping here a little bit, which is always nice. I'll be building anything anywhere. Um, Not really. Oh, the silver over here. Well, that must hurt. The, oh, that must be annoying for the Mamluks. They had conquered that, and... oh. The tax relief has expired. Um, how is the stability moving right now? You're still technically gaining some. Oh man, the provincial corruption is still going haywire. Now what I might do is actually provide some grain for the commoners. If we go for the generous one. That's two. So yeah, 60% of the grain. It's minus two for unrest. Well, we don't actually need all that much, but it's also going to help a little bit with the stability. If we go for the full one, it's going to be an extra 40%, although it would be also an extra 15% for stability and 10% for the increase into wall. I'm going to try the mid one, though. I'll check if that is going to be sufficient to not, you know, reduce our income to zero, but at the same time help a little bit with the stability and all that, give the population a bit happier. Oh, there we go. That's another rebellion that will not fire. And okay, so we only have like two provinces with unrest right now. That is actually quite impressive. Yeah, we got exactly two right now. 
All right. So how much silver mines do we have here? I'm guessing it's pretty much full. I actually know there is room for more. Not much more, but a little bit. Because I can't invest there right now. That's a force limit. I mean, it was 14 people. Okay, now it's 15, so it is slowly improving. Oh, and we got... We're going to get a claim on uh, Mamluks. You know what? I might as well. Although the... Ooh. Turkish Empire has a permanent claim on that. Interesting. Well, I can't invest that because we're building the castle, so I can't use the manual invest. I could technically put that into the auto investor, but right now we've got so many provinces already in that that it's um, not going to be investing a lot. But yeah, once the castle is completed, we can technically invest in there, but that is going to take a while still. Another thousand days. So it's just it's going to be delayed a little bit. I suspect that the population is going to be investing there on their own as well. Because I reckon the silver mines are making a pretty good profit. Let me actually see. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> 23 ducats profit. I think that is um, on a yearly basis though. But that, yeah, that goes to the population of course. There we go, we've got Conquest Casabelli against Mamluks. Not that we'll be using that. So how strong are the Mamluks right now? They've got still 25,000 and they've got 17,000 manpower reserves. But they will probably... Ooh, they actually got a fort over here being seized down. I mean, suppose they got... Several nations that they're fighting in here, but if you have a look at Corset, for example, it's um, basically the same nations that we had to fight. Maybe even a few more. Well, yeah, I would like to invest there myself, but it might be that the mine is going to be fully invested already once we get to that point. But, you know, if there's, uh, if, if it's still possible at that point, then we'll certainly try it. So how much did we do over here? Oh, it went there automatically back. Good. Okay, that's a 2,000 over there. Okay, well that is at least going to make a life a lot easier. And those two provinces are actually pretty good provinces overall. This is good for, for trade. And that one's a gold province. So if we can, uh, you know, maybe reduce any potential unrest there and such, that'd be nice. Right, so I wanted to check the Theodora. How are they in terms of the vassalization? It's still 16 points away. Oh, the economic base has started increasing, but the military power compared to them is uh, not quite as good yet. Oh, right, we're not that far away from getting a claim over... I, tell... I could actually claim Kaffa. But that would also put us right next to Poland. Actually, how much? Oh, wow. Crimea has got a bit of land there. Oh, wow. Hungary has lost like half its territory to Turkish Empire now. How strong are they? Uh, There's only 27,000. And they've got 20,000 manpower, so it's not that different. Sharing knowledge to Crimea. Interesting. And we're still losing a bit of money. Well, as the realm expenses we're paying for the grain, it's um tends to be a bit expensive. Only twenty seven tasks. <laughs> well it, yeah, it is quite a bit. But I was expecting honestly at least thirty thousand. Looking at the size that they have. Oh, we got some more investments. Let's have a look actually. Taguria, where is that? Oh right, that's uh, the coast province there. That would be 1488. So there's a little bit of investments there. I'm just gonna go until we see if there's. Been, well, actually, you know what? We can just have a look at over the province here. Have there been any. Okay, there's been one decade invest in developments and a little bit into academic in our capital. And what about. Actually, down here, is there any investments there? I'm just gonna exit that one. No need to go through all of that. I just wanna make sure that I know when the investments happen. No inquisition then. And not for the time being. Um, okay, there's a little bit of investments there. Oh, there's a bit of forestry investments there. Suppose that... Oh, wow, Derbent doesn't have a lot of land in there. Well, I suppose it's a bit of a small province, but like, there's not a lot of uh, investments in there that can be done. A little bit of industry. Commercial is pretty good in there, though. Yeah, we did lose quite a bit of uh, population in the war. Or a decent bit, at least. But, like, at least the situation is... Oh, right, so we... Oh. Right, so if we really want to convert these uh, two provinces all the way, what we should do is set the missionaries in there and put it at... Ooh. Right, we lose a bit of commerce production now. Which probably means that we might lose some centers of trade now that I think of it. Now, let's have a look. So we've got some minor one over there. we at least got the one important one. Oh, we actually got two important ones now. Interesting. 
So is our capital now? It's okay. Four and a half and four point seven power, and four and a half value. I mean, it's getting better at least. Uh, oh, and we got an important one over there as well in Tabriz. I mean, that one makes sense. Uh, so is there any? You know, Debility is still not getting any power because it just needs to have a little bit more. I don't remember if it's trade power or trade value. I remember that we can see it somewhere, but it's just uh, there's several locations to check through. So commercialization. Let's see. Province. Trade value over 5. Okay. So it just needs more trade value. And burger power needs to be over 40%, which it probably is actually there. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, it's just about 40. Okay. What about the subsistence? Subsistence. 6.6%. Um, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. If we can just get the trade value a bit higher, it should be fine. 